Yeah, and for more, let's go now to where the pandemic is hitting hardest in the U.S., New York City. I'm joined now by correspondent James Reinel from Manhattan. Good evening to you, James. Talk to me about the situation in the city tonight. We are already reading horror stories from New York hospitals on the verge of collapsing because so many people are getting sick. Yes, horror stories indeed. Um, I think one of the most shocking images, which at the moment is sending a chill down the shiver of the spines of New Yorkers, is a viral video that's been posted on social media from Brooklyn. And it shows some harrowing images of body bags lined up outside a hospital in Brooklyn and then being loaded on a forklift truck into a refrigerated truck. Um, members of the public nearby looking in uh, horror uh, at a situation which would have been unimaginable a few weeks ago. Um, and we're hearing stories from inside the hospitals, from doctors and nurses who are overworked, working long hours, say they don't have enough protective gear, they don't have masks. Some of them we hear are having to keep masks on their mouth and use them for much longer than they're actually meant to be used for, having to find ingenious ways of cleaning them making them last longer. It's not working. There have been cases of sickness among doctors and nurses, including death. Uh, of course, it's not all bad. Um, what you just described before, a field hospital being erected in Central Park, of all places, that's coming online at the moment. Also today, a large naval vessel called the Comfort arrived in New York. It docked uh, on the other side of town in that direction from me uh, um, with 750 beds. Um, and uh, a convention center opened up as well in the same okay. direction, well, also with a large number of beds. The big question is, of course, is it all going to be enough? Well, on Sunday, James, the U.S. president seemed to imply that at New York hospitals, the, the call for more protective equipment is the result of theft. Take a listen to what the president said. That statement was made that they've been delivering for years 10 to 20,000 masks. Okay, it's a New York hospital. Very, it's packed all the time. How do you go from 10 to 20 to 300,000? 10 to 20,000 masks to 300,000, even though this is different. Something's going on. And you ought to look into it as reporters. Where are the masks going? Are they going out the back door? It's important to note, James, that the U.S. president, he gave no evidence of what he suggested there. H has there been reaction in New York to what the president said? Well, I think from the people that I've spoken to, as often is the case with President Trump, is that the reaction is something of a cringe. Big questions about that. For example, who's going to be stealing face masks uh, at the moment? Uh, what would be the purpose for this? There has been a formal reaction from uh, Kenneth Raska, um, from the Greater New York Hospital Association. Uh, he put it this way. Um, uh, doctors and nurses in New York City are treating an exploding number of coronavirus cases, uh, he said. Uh, and they deserve better than these comments from President Trump about this possibility, unsubstantiated, of theft of face masks. Uh, for many people, this is just a diversion tactic, and it relates to this ongoing row between the states and uh, Washington as to whether or not the federal government is helping out Americans across the country as much as it should be doing. There is no nationwide lockdown in the United States, but the Centers for Disease Control has issued a travel advisory for anyone going to New York and several neighboring states. Are, are you noticing any impact from that, any difference there in the city? Yeah, the travel advisory came in in the last 24 hours or so. Uh, and the advisory is for people in New York State, uh, Connecticut, and New Jersey. These are three states in the northeast of the country. No travel across state lines for the next 14 days. It's an advisory. It's not going to be enforced. And there are some carve-outs for it. So truckers, people delivering food, uh, people involved in uh, providing health care, doctors and nurses, they are allowed to travel. Uh, I don't see any major impacts of it just yet, but I think there are two things to consider here. Um, one of them is that a lot of people who were going to leave New York because of the scale of the epidemic here have done so already. They've known about this for several days. If they did have a house down in Florida, maybe they've moved to it already. The other one is, of course, that some people are taking the responsible course and they've decided that they're not going to move. They might have the virus and they're worried about taking it to other parts of the country. Yeah. Yeah, there is this big disconnect in America at the moment. You've got the cities reeling from 
infections. You've got rural areas that seem resistant to warnings. Do you expect this to change now that U.S. President Trump has retreated from his hope of returning the country to normal by Easter? Yeah, sometimes it feels in America like you're living in two countries. Here we are uh, in New York facing a lockdown, talking about body bags being piled up outside hospitals. And then I talk to some of my friends and relatives in other parts of the country, perhaps more rural areas. And what are they doing? You know, having dinner parties where they're not even talking to their guests about the coronavirus and finding out first if anybody might be infected or has got a little bit of a chesty cough or some kind of telltale sign. And so, yeah, it is uh, reinforcing these divides that we've seen for a long time in America, perhaps whereby metropolitan and liberal people are more concerned about the virus, um, talking about taking responsibility, um, talking about social distancing and implementing these measures, and perhaps another attitude uh, which you might see on the right of the political spectru spectrum, which is that we've got to get this country moving again. We've got to get the economy going. Uh, right. The markets have already tanked. Unemployment is already high. That's going to be worse over the long run. Um, but when it comes to Donald Trump and his plan for Easter and the pushback of that, doesn't seem likely in any time coming up in the next few weeks. All right. Correspondent James Ryan joining us tonight from New York. James, thank you very much. Stay safe and stay healthy.